Hi, this video will cover my experience with this watercolor album and overcoming some art block I had today. First, let's test my new sketchbook. It's a hardcover, stitch bound, 60 pages or 30 sheets if you don't count front and back. The thick 135 pound paper is acid free with 25% cotton fiber content. It's affordable, well made, and designed for use with watercolor paints but it would also work well with pens, acrylics, or gouache. It has a small pocket for holding notes, photos, or other loose sketches. I notice that the paper texture varies slightly per page, but it all falls within a standard appearance for cold press papers with no noticeable repetitive lines or grain marks. You will notice the slightly bumpy surface most when using pencils. Gel pens and paint markers went down smoothly. Technical pens and fine liners work really well, and even when dragging their needle fine tip across the surface of this paper, there was no skipping or tearing. The coating on this paper provides a good balance between being strong, absorbent, and still being able to erase mistakes or do lifting techniques with watercolor without damaging the paper surface. The paper plays really nicely with granulating paints, allowing for prominent texture effects. I did notice a variety of downsides, including limiting the effects of salt and a tendency to create water blooms. The problem is the paper is quick to absorb, so quick that you have to anticipate the fast absorption while painting, or the wash of the color you're putting down will be totally dry on one end of the area you're filling. When this happens, a bloom or back run is likely to occur, creating an uneven, splotchy look. This also stifled the ability of the paint to react with salt, because the paint soaked into the page before it could cause a texture effect. This paper can be used to layer or glaze colors on top of previously dry colors. However, you have to be delicate and let your brush glide over the surface instead of repeated strokes because it will start to lift. Lifting or erasing dry layers of color is easier to do on this paper than most watercolor papers. If you really love layering and find yourself frustrated with papers that allow your watercolors to lift up and erase too easily, you may want to try the 140 pound B cold press paper. You may be surprised at how much difference type of paper makes when considering which colors of paints are staining or not. When using mixed media, it's important to note that any alcohol based marker like Sharpies or Copics will bleed through the back of the page. I've also noticed that the stitching causes inks or paints to spread onto other pages if soaked along the center folding line. I was very impressed at how much water this paper could take with minimal buckling or warping. The packaging said you could flood each page with color, and I took that as a challenge. I was pleasantly surprised to not ruin this sketchbook. So now that I know what to expect, it's time to draw and paint. Unfortunately, I had a hard week, and it's difficult to be creative when you don't feel well. But I know that painting is very relaxing for me, and that it would help me feel better. So what do you do when you don't feel like you're capable, or you just can't think of something in particular you'd like to draw? I personally keep books of beautiful plants and wildlife to help inspire me when this happens. So today, I'll be flipping through the Flower Color Guide, a book of flower photography organized by color. This can be really nice for days you are inspired by a specific color, and for instance, you want a quick reference of some flowers that are just yellow. This is a beautiful book, though it should be noted that the format is small, and as a 5 inch by 7 inch book, there's only so detailed the photography can be. There are about 400 flower photos, but there are many duplicates of flower types. 
such as the 51 different color varieties of roses. Still, it can be a lovely reference for both drawing and coloring ideas. I'll put the link for this book and the art supplies I used today in the video description. After flipping through and settling on a water lily, I picked some paints that were close matches to the colors I saw on the flower. And while you can mix your own colors from a more limited set, I find that the more steps that stand in my way of creating art, the less likely I am to paint on a bad day. A good alternative to owning a lot of colors is to pre-mix custom colors from your tube paints onto a palette. For instance, if you have a magenta and a yellow, to squeeze some out into a pan and mix it so you have an orange ready to use on a day you're not feeling like mixing colors or you're just really limited on time. Having a pre-made palette with a variety of colors and a couple of your favorite brushes along with a sketchbook out where you can reach it and not bury it in a drawer may help you create more often without feeling daunted by setting up. I tried not to get too hung up on exactly copying the reference or trying for realism and instead tried to study the way the center of the flower was shaped and letting that initial sketch determine the size of the surrounding petals. I found minor mistakes were pretty easy to fix with both erasing of the pencil and watercolor being quick and non-damaging to the surface of this paper. Overall, for not being 100% cotton pro-grade paper, I was pleasantly surprised to find it usable. I plan to use it for thumbnail sketches, color planning, and travel sketches. If you have a favorite watercolor sketchbook, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below.